Hey guys, today we're gonna test my E30 from zero to 60. When it was new, it was supposed to do it in 8.5 seconds, but I'm sure that after 34 years and nearly 230,000 miles, things must have changed. I'm also gonna give you some quick pointers of what to look for in case you're interested in getting one of these. And I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown on the current condition, current value of my car, and all that good stuff. Are you ready? Let's go. If you're only here to see how slow or how fast my car is and you don't really care for Gone with the Wind, you can fast forward to this minute right here, but I hope that you can stick around for the duration of the video. The E30 was sold in the United States from 1984 to 1993. Its main competitor was the Mercedes 190E. Uh, when I bought this car back in 2013, I say you could get one of these in prime condition for about $5,000. Mine is a less desirable sedan, and in my experience, coupes are more desirable than sedans and convertibles. I prefer the sedans, don't care too much for the convertibles, but they're about similarly priced. I'm not gonna include the M3 in this video because price-wise, it's just a whole different animal. And honestly, I think that mechanically, it's almost a completely different car. E30s are pretty common, but it's getting harder to find them in this condition. I would consider mine to be maybe like a nine out of 10, especially considering that it's a daily driver. I drive this car every day and it's not a garage queen. Why did I pick this car? I know that it sounds cliche, but I didn't pick the car, the car picked me. In 2013, my wife and I decided to turn our finances around and part of the plan was to get rid of as much, as much debt as possible and we, so we got rid of two cars that we were financing at the time and we had a budget of $10,000 in cash to buy two cars that had to be dependable. We bought a 1993 Lexus SC300 that turned out to be super reliable. I mean, that's what you would expect from a Lexus, right? But I really took a gamble with this E30. I had one back in college. It was a hand-me-down from my brother, and that car happened to be reliable despite the fact that it had a lot of miles. I think uh, when it broke down, it had like 240,000 miles, and it was, uh, it was reliable and fun to drive at the same time. And I wanted something this time, I wanted something that was real-world drive, so most Honda products from the 80s and 90s were automatically excluded. It had to have a manual transmission, and it had to be under $5,000. Other choices were uh, Celicas from the 80s and 90s, Miatas, and Fox Bodies, which is the Mustang. Long story longer, I found this car on Craigslist and I paid $3,200, I believe. It didn't need any immediate repairs, but it was leaking all over and aesthetically it didn't need anything. I mean, the paint was flawless, the interior was flawless, just needed some waxing and stuff like that. The body was perfectly straight and the paint was super shiny. The first thing I did when I got it is I took it to a good local mechanic who knew these cars and he resealed the coal powertrain and change the timing belt and water pump. That's something that I advise you do because these cars are prone to snap the timing belt. In the following years, I swapped the transmission for a five speed and added a 3.73 limited slip differential. I changed the suspension and dropped the car about an inch. I also upgraded the stock exhaust for a super sprint that sounds amazing. <laughs> I added a short shifter, a IS body kit, a steering wheel, and I just went through a lot of wheels until I found the current ones, which I love. I love the upgrades, have added to the experience, but have not taken a toll on the relative comfort of driving this car. I've driven this car 700 miles in a day, and it hasn't broken my back, so it's, it's not that bad, actually. It's so reliable that I'm not afraid to drive it. Um, I'm not afraid to put a lot of miles on it. I bought it with 134,000 miles, and nine years later, it's about to hit 230,000 miles. Um, so I wasn't looking for a garage queen or a classic, more of a daily driver with some sort of cool factor. This car is super fun to drive, I must tell you. Um, I love driving on back roads and I find a lot of joy in driving it daily to and from work, tossing it around and going through the gears in complete control. Zero to 60, well, that's another story. It's glacially slow. Okay, I'm super excited because I have never tested my 0 to 60 in this car. This is not a car that I abuse or anything, but I got this cool little app that is going to tell me how I do. This car was rated at 0 to 60 in about 8.5 seconds, but that was 34 years ago. So let's see how it does with 2,029,000 and change miles on the odometer. I 
I've never driven this car this fast. Poor baby. Please don't hate me. Okay. Where's my phone? It says 9.3. Not too bad. Not too bad. I was expecting more like over 10 seconds. Back in the 80s, the E30 was the standard of the small sports sedan. At 8.5 seconds, zero to 60, the E30 was a pair with the 190E from Mercedes-Benz. For context, the 1989 Ford Mustang GT was doing zero to 60 in about seven seconds, but for that, it needed an eight-cylinder engine with 225 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque. But the Mustang GT was front heavy and it was just a heavier car. The magic of the E30 was in its balance um, to just the way it drives is so balanced. The car drives super smooth at highway speeds. Mine starts losing composure at about triple digit speeds, but hey, I don't need to go that fast. The zero to 60 turned out to be a disaster. I had a few trials after that and I just couldn't make it work. I couldn't clock it, but it was, it was bad. And then at the end, my, my friend got in the car and he's over 200 pounds, so that affected the performance of the car really bad. Um, the best I could do with him was, I think, 11 seconds, zero to 60. So what is that, a mule? I think I can get below nine seconds if I'm willing to go past the red line, which is 6,200 RPM. I don't want to break this engine by trying to prove a point. I think I can do better than 9.3. Uh, 0 to 60 if I was willing to go beyond the 6200 rpm red line that this car has uh, It goes all the way to 7,000, but that's uncharted territory for me. I never drive this vehicle this aggressively uh, But I don't need to where, where I really get the joy of driving is when I hit this on and off ramps going to work This is one of my favorites It's almost at 360 and Then just going through the gears it's a lot of fun. You don't have to break any traffic laws. Usually in the morning, this road's empty, so I can do this all day. At 9.3, I'm probably at Toyota Prius territory. So that was kind of a shocker, but can a Prius drive with this joy? I seriously doubt it. Things to look for. If you are in the market for an E30, uh, I recommend that you get one from 1987 and on, which uh, has the better six cylinder engine, the 2.5 M20, uh, that has an increased horsepower, 267 horsepower. I would skip any variation of the four cylinder, unless you had the, obviously the M3. They, they're reliable, but they're very slow. And don't be afraid to get one that has a lot of miles on it, as long as it's been properly maintained. Without giving you a complete crash course on the 830, I would say that the best year, in my opinion, for these cars is 1989, which is this, because by then it had lost the bigger metal bumpers known as the diving boards, and they were replaced by nicer plastic bumpers, at least in the United States, that's what my car has. And I think just, it looks nicer. I mean, and you know, to each their own, in my opinion, they look nicer. And in 1989, it didn't come with an airbag on the steering wheel. And one can argue that an airbag in the steering wheel uh, can offer some protection, but you don't buy one of these cars because you want to be safe, especially for modern standards. I'll buy an E30 that is originally from drier climates like California and Arizona, uh, because these cars, because they're old, um, they're subject to corrosion and rusting. Ideally, you should buy one with the original paint that you can see any surface rust that needs attention, even if the paint has seen better days. Also, uh, the original paint in these cars is such high quality that it's nearly impossible to match. And paints today are just more environmentally friendly, but don't hold up nearly as good as these old paints from the 80s. E30s are known to leak, so don't be afraid to get one with a leaky undercarriage, of course, uh, within reason. As long as you have it inspected to get a good idea of what needs to uh, be addressed once you take over ownership. Same with the warning lights on the instrument panel. Having some of these lights on doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad car, that it's in bad shape. A simple throughout mechanic inspection can sort out the overall mechanic condition of your prospect. The dashboard is prone to cracking, so if you find one in pristine condition, consider yourself very lucky. I am a lucky man because mine is flawless. E30s with manual transmissions are more expensive than automatics. Also, 
I should warn you that sourcing good parts for an E30 is becoming more and more expensive. It's definitely not what it used to be five years ago. And uh, finding a good mechanic that knows these cars is, is going to improve the overall experience of owning a car like this because as with any old car, um, they break down. What was that? And I mean, once in a while, you're going to need somebody that knows these cars. Mine has never let me stranded, so knock on wood. I have benefited from all the good things associated with driving a, an old affordable vintage car without any of the grief and headaches of driving a car with all parts. As far as current market value of my E30, uh, prices are all over the place. I won't overcomplicate this video because as they say, a car is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. Mine in its current condition, I would say that it's worth about $15,000, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. It all depends on how long I'm willing to wait for the right buyer. But it's nice to know that I have driven this car for almost nine years and close to 100,000 miles for free, basically. And not only that, it actually has uh, some equity now, so I have some extra money in my pocket after driving this car for nine years. I've noticed that E30s um, get a lot more attention now. Um, almost daily I get um, bike drivers giving me their thumbs up or starting a conversation at the gas station about my car, taking pictures and all that. And I don't really know why, but it has increased in the last year especially. Um, I mean, these cars are pretty common and my car has nothing spectacular going on. Uh, who knows? The biggest irony is that my European sports sedan from the 80s is slower than a Toyota Prius, which is the epitome of the modern, boring, and slow driving appliance. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.